Hello guys, Crispy here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm going to be testing an entire computer that I bought used last week for 340 euros. Wait a second. First of all, let's just, let's just peel that off. Yes. Yeah, wait. Okay. That is beautiful. All right, much better, isn't it? <laughs> so this beautiful beast has an i7 3770K that I overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. The motherboard is an ASUS Maximus 5 Genie or Genie or whatever. <laughs> so it was a high-end board back in the day when this CPU launched um, and we can of course overclock with it. It also came with a Noctua cooler which does a really good job at cooling this old beast. Unfortunately it only came with 8 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel 1600 megahertz DDR3. I upgraded it to 16 still in dual channel still 1600 megahertz. For storage we got a 256 gig SSD and I also added another one terabyte hard drive. So this is more of like a $400 PC. It has a 750 watt thermal take power supply and it's powering our beautiful new to the channel GTX 970 GPU. A lot of people have been asking for it and I finally got it in this PC bundle right here. Now the question is how will this i7 3770K from 2012 perform in the latest and greatest titles using a GTX 970 to back it up. Let's find out, shall we? And we are now in the desktop. You can see the GTX 970 showing up there in MSI Afterburner. We overclocked it a little bit. Over here you can see the CPU i7 3770K. It's overclocked by the multiplier right there. You can see the motherboard right here, the memory, dual channel, 16 gigabytes, DDR3, and the GPU specs are right here as you can see Elpida what uh, I've never seen that uh, type of memory there okay anyways <laughs> first up we got cyberbug 2077 and I'm really curious to see how these specs handle it we're playing at 1080p resolution of course using medium settings here we are everything's looking pretty and we are above 30 FPS for now at least it, it will definitely drop okay so Unfortunately, it's not the best experience ever here in Cyberbug, but I thought the 970 would do a little bit better of a job here in Cyberbug, to be honest. The CPU is fine. As you can see, it's running around like 50 to 60% usage most of the time. Uh, but the GPU is struggling quite a bit. The 970 usually performs around the same as an RX 570, for example, but, well, not in Cyberbug, unfortunately. Still, these are playable FPS. This is the most intensive little spot in the map that I that I tested so far. And it's, uh, yeah, it's slightly stuttery. It's slightly dropping from 60. Ah. But, from 30, I mean, <laughs> um, but it could be worse, right? So this is CSGO, of course, and we're playing it at 1080p resolution using low settings. This is a deathmatch, by the way, and I don't have my sensitivity or my crosshair or my anything. Well, we can still do this, my friends, we can still do this. We just gotta believe at times. There we go. There we, I believe, my friends. See? <laughs> oh, boy. So these are still very good FPS. Remember, this is deathmatch. It's a normal deathmatch server. And usually that's a bit more CPU intensive than the actual competitive mode in this game. So it's great to see that i7 uh, is still great for this game. No, 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 please. All right, guys, we just joined another server. I started counting the FPS now. Okay, there we go. The guy just died here. Oh, oh! Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's all good. There we go. There we go. Last bullet. Okay. This is a perfect experience, guys. Like, you can run a high refresh rate monitor with this PC. It's amazing. Of course, CSGO isn't really hard to run at all, but it had some updates and it's a little bit broken these days. Ah, okay, last bullet again. <laughs> there we go. Very nice, guys. Ah, <laughs> the guy's dominating me.
There we go. Revenge, boy! And now we got Red Dead Redemption 2, another very intensive game. We're playing at 1080p resolution using uh, balanced settings, medium to high, I would say. Most of the things are on medium, actually. Wow, it's actually still looking pretty decent, isn't it, guys? All right, I am liking this. There's Roach. Hello, my boy. How's it going? We're in Saint Denis right now, and... I think this is totally playable, guys. Okay, CPU doesn't have a problem here as well. It's running at around like 70 to 80% usage. And I mean, it's a super playable and smooth experience. Look at that frame time graph. It's actually pretty nice. And I can't feel any stuttering whatsoever. Wow. Amazing what this can do still. It's running amazing. 48 FPS on average in the Saint Denis area. It just goes to show you that you don't need the latest and greatest to play a beautiful game and demanding one like Red Dead Redemption 2 properly. Call of Duty Warzone is up next and in their complete wisdom, in Season 5 they decided to block MSI Afterburner so it doesn't work, we can't count averages and 1% lows. At least we got Nvidia's performance overlay to see CPU usage, GPU usage, FPS, 99% FPS and stuff so we, we should be fine here. I'm playing this one at the 1080p resolution using the lows settings as you can see all right looking at the entire map we're getting 70s not too bad to be honest let's go to the downtown area and we'll need to pay a little bit of attention to that cpu and gpu usage metrics because yeah as you can see the gpu is not maxed out so the 970 still has a little bit to give you know it could possibly achieve 60 plus fps all of the time but the i7 3770k even when overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz which is like a, an achievable OC. Yeah, it can't really keep up with the 970 in this game, but that's not to say that this is a bad experience because it really isn't. Most of the time you are getting 60 plus FPS. There we go, we got another one. Pretty decent frame still, above 60, very close to it, but it's very playable, doesn't stutter whatsoever as well. That's what I was worried about, by the way, because uh, four cores and eight threads. Um, yeah, although we do get less than 60 FPS sometimes, I think it's pretty good. You will have fun in Warzone. Time for Valorant, and we're playing this one at the 1080p resolution using high settings. There we go, first kill and second kill. Okay, we got this. There's one here and another one here. And... Ah, come on. Uh, 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 uh. That's that's a really bad spawn. Like, I, I, it's not my fault that I died, right? <laughs> what up? Bastard, did you think you could kill me from the side? There we go. Not from behind, buddy. Not from be. Nope. Nope. Ah! <laughs> this is actually quite annoying. Uh, but you know what's not annoying? Getting these FPS. This is this is really good. Uh, it's it's extremely playable, isn't it, guys? It is actually a competitive experience. Doesn't stutter whatsoever as well, so no problems there. And if you want more FPS, you can always drop it down to low settings. Try our mode. Nice, 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 nice. There's one here. Just. Ooh, that was close. So we're, so we're obviously CPU bound here in Valorant. I expected it. Obviously, it's a very light game uh, to run on the GPU. Okay, okay, that was really bad, actually. But hey, considering that they actually broke the optimization in Valorant. Uh, the i7 is actually doing a pretty decent job, in my opinion. And this is Apex Legends now. We're playing it at the 1080p resolution using low settings, as you can see. What are you even doing? Stop it. This, this might be copyrighted, you stupid bastard. Anyway, GPU usage was maxed out, but now that we're in the ground, the CPU seems to be our bottleneck. We are getting really nice FPS, though. What's happening here? They're running back into the game where they're yeah, boy. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. I want to get that guy. Where is he? Where is he? I think I heard him. Yes, he's there. 
All right, there we go. There we go. P2020 to the rescue, my friends. So although we are CPU bound in Apex Legends, it's still a really smooth experience, guys. The 970 has a little bit more to give if you pair it, for example, with the Ryzen 5 3600 or Ryzen 3 3300X, it will definitely get more FPS, but this is not a bad experience whatsoever. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, there, there are way too many of them, I guess. Jesus Christ, oh my goodness. Okay, there's a shield there. Good stuff. Oh, oh hi! What, well, how's it going, friend? Please, okay, thank you very much for not killing me. I am very grateful for that. Uh, we need to go, guys. We need to go before they, they find us again. Oh, and there's another one. Jesus Christ, Jesus. No, 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 no. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here! So my team is actually waiting for me to revive them or something, but <laughs> you, you, you don't understand. I, I, have, I have a benchmark to make. I think that if you have a PC like this one and you want to play some Apex Legends, even in 2021, it will do a great job, as you can see. I'm just waiting on explosions now. Okay, there we go. It does drop from 60 instead of explosions. It gets extremely GPU demanding. Where the heck are they? Aha, found one. There he is. Okay, <laughs> almost got him. Time for GTA 5. We're playing using DirectX 11, the 1080p resolution, and the very high settings, as you can see right here. Look at that, 100 FPS. GPU is actually maxed out right now. Let's see how it handles it uh, while driving fast through the city. It usually is a little bit more CPU bound, this uh, thing that we're doing right now. GPU usage is not maxed out anymore uh, because we're CPU bound. The game only utilizes like four threads on the CPU. That's why it's only around like 50 to 60% usage there, the i7. Uh, but I mean, this is totally smooth and playable, right? <laughs> it's well above 60 FPS. It's amazing. This CPU is actually getting around the same FPS Yes, I believe, as my Ryzen 7 1700 uh, CPU. When I played with that, I think it also gave me around like 90 to 100 FPS most of the time. Maybe this is slightly slower than that CPU overclocked, but this is insane performance from a 2012 CPU, that's for sure. And of course, the 970 has no issues playing GTA 5 as well. As you can see, it gets more GPU bound uh, near grassy areas, but the 970 is still amazing for this load. Hello, Jacqueline, how's it going? Let's see, most intensive little bush of the benchmark run, and it's still well above 60, guys. Wow. What an amazing experience. <laughs> oh. Jackie boy, how are you, my friend? Finally, yeah, but can't give it. Uh, he's not dead. Okay, see that? He's not dead. Battlefield 5. Let's play this one at the 1080p resolution using the high settings. The FOV is about 6, so I'm just gonna change that. <laughs> this is also a 64 player server, and every time I tab in, there's a little stutter, so <laughs> I'll try not to do that too often. Alright, we're just gonna restart the counting system there because, well, I tabbed in way too much and the 1% lows were at 21. Uh, right now, it's actually pretty decent. Look at that. It, and it's high settings. High settings, guys. This isn't the smoothest experience ever that you can have in Battlefield 5, of course. For that, you'll want like a 6-core CPU with 12 threads. But it's not bad. Again, 2012 CPU playing Battlefield 5 in a 64-player server. Just fine. Well above 60 FPS. Where is he? There's enemy okay finally got my first kill guys right there's another one got him okay good stuff we're doing this and there. got another one all right all good uh, oh, 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 oh how did you miss everything dude oh my god gpu is maxed out probably a lot of the time i am impressed like this is way better than what i was expecting in battlefield 5 there we go, another one down. All right, so there's a tank right here. Oh, you missed the tank, buddy. I'm gonna try to do something to it. Maybe use these. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, nice explosion. That was beautiful. And we're playing PUBG now at the 1080p resolution using medium settings. 
All right, we're here. Let's start counting our FPS. 1% lows are probably going to suck because this game has some stuttering problems. It doesn't matter what specs you use. It stutters even on my 5900X when playing with a 1080 Ti. So, yeah. <laughs> Still, this is a perfectly playable and enjoyable experience. As you can see, the game doesn't look very bad if you don't put it on very low. Medium settings, I think, is a very nice balance. I don't really recommend you to play this one on high high because it will surpass the VRAM limitations and it will start stuttering even more. Ooh, I found a smoke. So smokes are the most intensive thing in PUBG, basically. And if you stand inside of one for too long, your FPS will go to crap. Into the 50s. It's probably going to drop into the 30s, to be honest. <laughs> 41, 38. There we go. 37. The longer you wait, the less FPS you'll get. 35. I mean, it's still completely playable. Everybody's gonna experience those slowdowns with smokes, but, you know, maybe don't throw them. <laughs> That's my recommendation. You should not throw smokes in PUBG, all right? Uh, anyway, outside of town, we get up into the 100s. GPU usage is now maxed out, almost, more or less. Actually, it isn't. Anyway, in the end, if you want to play PUBG, these specs will do an absolutely fine job at it. Forza Horizon 4 is next. I'm playing at 1080p resolution using the high settings. The motion blur. No, we don't want that. Thank you. And look at this game, guys. It's looking beautiful here on high. It's playing amazing with 100 FPS right now. And we're testing out a new car. Perfect stuff. New car, new PC. You know, it's, it's amazing. So guys, I lost both of my mirrors already. Don't ask me how. Uh, we're gonna go to the festival area right now. And by the way, you, you're supposed to destroy things. As you can see, you, you get more uh, points by destroying these things. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm doing it. It's racing time. Let's start counting those frames. And look at that. Whenever all of the cars are in the screen at once, uh, you get less FPS, of course, but it's, it's still very much under control. Very nice, guys. To be honest, the i7-3770K with an overclock is actually impressing me quite a bit. That was really bad. <laughs> I thought I was doing a really nice drift there, and then I end it like that. Horrible. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's much better. By the way, Logitech, you still haven't contacted me. What, what's what's wrong? What's going on? I'm not sure, but wasn't the Subaru a little bit better than this one? Maybe it's because it was powered by the GT710. I don't know, but I'm not feeling the 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 speed on this car. You know, it doesn't accelerate as much as the Subaru. I think. I guess the beginning of this race was the most intensive part because we're now getting like a, around 100 frames every time. Okay, I think this PC will get wrecked in this one. This is Assassin's Creed Valhalla playing at 1080p resolution, 100% render scale using medium settings with low anti-aliasing and these are turned off right here. It's actually not bad. Look at that. Okay. I, I don't know, man. Like, these old i7s just don't die for some reason. <laughs> They're super good still. All right, I'm going to start counting our frames now. This offshore area is super intensive in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And uh, it's, it's getting pretty playable FPS still, guys. If somebody handed me this PC without telling me what it was for me to test it out and play, like, Assassin's Creed Valhalla on it, for example... I wouldn't say it had a nine-year-old CPU in it. Like, what? This is crazy. This is crazy, guys. Zero stutters as well. As you can see, we got a single one at the beginning there, but things were still loading. Uh, right now, it's super smooth. That frame time graph is amazing. Look at that. It's DDR3 RAM as well, clocked at 1600 megahertz. Nothing fancy at all. We could buy like DDR3 at 2133 or 2400 megahertz, I think, uh, and get more FPS in CPU bound scenarios. But it seems like the i7 is not even the bottleneck in Valhalla. Hi Roach, how's it going? It's been a while, buddy, since Red Dead 2. Um, by the way, this makes me want to try out the i7-3770K 
it with a very high-end GPU, something like a 370, 3080. Maybe that will happen. I don't know. It all depends on the prices, of course, uh, if those drop or if I get a sponsor. Who knows, right? <laughs> Time for Minecraft Java Edition. We're playing it using Optifine in the version 1.16.5. And I'm running it, of course, at the 1080p resolution using high settings. Like, I, I don't know. This game has a ton of settings, but I think I set everything to high. We're using shaders, by the way. Silders, vibrant shaders on high. So I am a little bit worried about our i7 3770K here in Minecraft because shaders are intensive both for our GPU and our CPU. So you can see that the GPU is nowhere nearly maxed out. It's actually below 50% usage most of the time, which is kind of bad actually. And the CPU utilization is a little bit low as well because the game doesn't use more than a couple of cores. Yeah, and it's why it's stuttering and getting low FPS. So unfortunately, using shaders, the game is still playable, but I mean, I expected more. So with the shaders turned off, everything is super smooth, guys. Okay, there's still the occasional stutter here and there because it's still got a render things, the chunks, you know. Yeah, if you're just walking around, playing survival mode, everything will have a lot of time to render, so the stutters aren't really gonna be very noticeable. Uh, you might even not experience any stutterings whatsoever. Horizon Zero Dawn. We're playing this one at the 1080p resolution, 100% render scale, using medium settings without motion blur. Here we go, and we didn't get stuck there. Finally, great stuff. So let's start counting our FPS here. This is somewhat of a demanding area, this little town right here. As you can see, the i7 and the GTX 970 are actually kind of perfect for each other. The the CPU utilization is kind of high, as well as GPU utilization. CPU is not bottlenecking the card, although sometimes we see 90 plus percent CPU utilization there and our 1% lows go to crap, so that's kind of weird. Of course, this game is a recent one. It's not really that well optimized and it will definitely benefit from more than 8 threads and four physical cores, of course. I think like uh, an i5 10400F uh, or an i7 8700, for example, would fare much better than even like an i7 7700K in this one because of those extra cores. That said, it's still no problem though, you know? It's, it feels smooth most of the time and it's quite playable. All right, let's get into a bit of a fight and see if these effects drop our frames. It seems like they don't which is actually quite surprising. I was expecting a few stutters here as well, loading the things at least. Uh, but it seems like, yeah, it's, it's perfectly playable, guys. I like the experience. The 3770K is definitely surpassing my expectations in this video. Uh, it's, it's really good. This is intensive after all, and it's getting pretty good frames and consistent ones as well. Okay, this is Fortnite, as you can tell by the horrible stuttering issues. I think that's the best feature about this game. Anyway, we're playing it at 1080p resolution using high settings and DirectX 11. DX12 was broken to me, it was stuttering even more. And the performance mode, well, it just doesn't really load our GPU. And being honest, Fortnite fans, how do you put up with this crappy performance? Like, every single season it gets worse, it's like Warzone, but even worse in my opinion because at least Warzone doesn't stutter like hell. This game literally stops at times and it's not because of the specs. It might be just a little bit but even in my Ryzen 9 5900X PC with an RX 5700 XT which should have zero problems playing this game obviously, it stutters. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Fortnite is broken and I don't like to test it. But anyways, <laughs> we're here today getting massive stuttering issues and 1% lows in the teens. This is the second game I am playing in Fortnite today. So things have loaded in and it's stuttering less. In the first one, it was a horrible mess. Like it was completely 100% unplayable, but I knew that this game has that loading issue. So I, I decided to uh, try it again in the second game. Why do we even go here, guys? Like, you get stuck here for like five seconds and then you go into a portal again. Why not portal 
to this area right away. I don't get it. And it's a new area, by the way, so it, it has massive performance issues because I still haven't uh, loaded it yet into the memory or into the disc. I have no clue, guys. It's just... I don't, I don't like the experience. Finally, for the last game, we got Rainbow Six Siege. We're playing this one at 1080p resolution. Increase that FOV slider, please. Using high settings. And I'm gonna set this to 100 because otherwise it's not at native resolution. There's always that guy playing on a Core 2 Duo. Okay, finally. <laughs> All right, look at these frames, guys. This is great right now. 6899. Why not 6969? I don't understand these names why do you choose that you have the option to choose a number okay, we need to be careful here i am um uh why why oh god i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> So the FPS are still counting. We're gonna see our killer. Maybe he's gonna be a better player than I would be. So, well, it's it's a good thing, right? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my God, that sensitivity though. <laughs> oh, 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 see, he killed one. So I'm glad that we're watching an actual good player playing this game. He's a lot better than me already. He's pushing. No, no, no. Oh. No, 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 buddy. Run away. Yes, okay, fine. <laughs> He's good. Oh, he might not be good anymore. Okay. Now, the experience seems to be quite good. It's 100 FPS on average here. 1% lows very close to that, indicating basically zero stutters. That's how you should uh, optimize your game. Epic, by the way. <laughs> you guys go first. I I'm not taking any chances now. <laughs> All right, I like the, the fireworks there. They look great. Why are there fireworks, by the way? I have no clue. Okay. The good thing about Rainbow Six is that it's so consistent that uh, every single round is going to get very similar FPS. I think we're kind of screwed. It's only me and this guy left, and we're walking wow, into a corridor of death, basically. <laughs> Cover me, buddy. Don't be there. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, all game. right. So I suck in Rainbow Six Siege, but this PC doesn't. And it is conclusion time. Do I recommend the old i7 3770K coupled with a GTX 970 and 16 gigabytes of RAM in 2021? I kind of do and I kind of don't at the same time. So if you can find one of these for like 250, 300 bucks already with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and the one terabyte hard drive, uh, I say go for it because it's actually pretty decent value. But if you have a little bit more to spend, I think you can find like an i3 10100 FPC brand new for around like 350 bucks without the GPU and then you should buy like a 970 for a hundred bucks if you can like that's a little bit impossible these days it's gonna be a little bit more expensive but you are gonna be in a newer platform the i3 is actually slightly faster than this it has DDR4 RAM and uh, well you can upgrade the CPU later on to an i5 6 core CPU so so basically it performs quite well, it impressed me quite a bit, I am happy with my purchase because I will use it to test other GPUs like the GTX 590, GTX 295 which don't work in my uh, actual PC, you know, my main rig. So that's mainly why I bought this thing, but if you are in the market for a used PC, Again, 250, 300 bucks should be a good price to pay for one of these. That said, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one very soon. And as always, I love you all. Bye-bye.